In this report, I share where to retire cheap overseas on Social Security in 2022. Since the monthly amount paid by Social Security to U.S. citizens varies, I will give examples of which country overseas I would prefer to retire at various retirement benefit levels. I will describe where I would decide to retire at each of the following monthly incomes, 1,000 per month, 1,500 per month, and 2,000 per month. But first I wanna dispel the myth that US citizens lose their social security retirement if they retire overseas. There's a very short list of countries where social security will not send payments and you probably would not want to retire in those countries anyway. I covered that topic in a previous report, Do You Lose Your Social Security If You Move Overseas? Link provided. In general, the Social Security Administration will not send Social Security retirement benefits to Cuba, North Korea, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. To that I say, who cares? I doubt many of us would retire there anyway. A few of us may visit, but retire there? I don't think so. But if you decide to ignore how I handle international banking, make sure to check the list of prohibited countries since it changes from time to time. But I, would, I wouldn't have the Social Security send me money no matter where in the world I retired. I would have them transferred into my U.S. bank that I've had for over 40 years and trust completely. For more detail on that, I have a report called Top Banking Mistakes, Mistakes I Learned Living Internationally. Additionally, Social Security benefits and Social Security disability payments are two different things. That same previous report has general information about conditions required to maintain Social Security disability while living overseas. That can be more challenging. Since I already covered that in, an, in the other report, I will assume you have read that as I discuss where to retire cheap overseas on Social Security in 2022. Okay, where to retire cheap overseas on Social Security. First, I have to ask, how large will your Social Security retirement check be? That will help me determine which countries might be affordable for you. Since I, I won't know the size of your monthly check, I will give you examples of countries I would live at at various price points per month. Here is how I will set the price points. The maximum retirement benefit paid by the U.S. Social Security Administration in 2021 was 3895 per month for someone that files at age 70. Wow, isn't that great? Imagine that. The, the minimum retirement benefit paid by Social Security in 2021 was $897 for someone that files with 30 years of coverage. So that gives you an idea of the range. But those are last year's numbers. The Social Security cost of living adjustment will increase by about 5.9% in 2022, the most it has increased in 40 years, uh, Lee provided. So if you're already getting your retirement benefits, it looks like it will increase in 2022. If you're not yet getting your retirement benefit, you need to find out how much it will be. You can visit my social security webpage, link provided, and get a very close estimate of how much you will receive per month, depending on whether you retire at age 62, 65, or 70. Um, that is a social security webpage, it's, it's not mine. Uh, they just call it my social security webpage. For the purpose of this report, I will set the monthly cost of living price points at 1,000 per month, 1,500 a month, and 2,000 per month. At each of these price points, I'll tell you where in the world I would choose to live if my social security check was at that price point. Okay, my favorite places to retire cheap on 1,000 per month. If I had a social security check, of a thousand per month, I would enjoy living in the following places. You might be wondering why I know so much about where I would live overseas on a limited budget. I've lived in and visited 67 countries since I left the USA 14 years ago. In fact, I moved forward through the world from country to country without returning home to the USA. I almost never buy round trip tickets. 
I just move forward slowly, spending from two to six months in each country. I don't fly home. I mostly just move forward on ground transportation uh, to the next adjacent country. I call what I do slow traveling the world. I avoid expensive international flights whenever possible. I have no empty bed to fly back to anywhere in the world. I write cost of living reports in each country as I travel the world. So that's how I know which country would be my favorite to live in at each price point. The fact that it is possible to live in a place for so cheap does not mean it will make it into my top five favorite list at each price point. There are probably 40 places in the world I could live on a thousand per month, but a place has to make my top five favorites to live at this price point to make it into the following list. Okay, so here are my top five favorite at 1000 per month. I'll list them in reverse order with my favorite last of the five. Antigua, Guatemala. We just spent a month in Antigua, Guatemala and, and fell in love with the place all over again. Antigua is one of my favorite places in all of Latin America. The people are very friendly there and it's just a very friendly and beautiful colonial era town. The food choices are beyond and above what you would expect in a town this size. And the expats in the area seem to be well-traveled before showing up in Antigua and are willing and able to integrate into the local environment and are less interested in importing their home country culture into Antigua. With a little planning and coordination, I would be able to live in Antigua, Guatemala for around a thousand per month. Okay. That's number five. Number four, Puerto Morelos, Mexico. Puerto Morelos is one of my favorite places in the state of Quintana Roo, Mexico. When I first started visiting Riviera Maya in the early 1990s, I loved places like Tulum and Playa del Carmen the most, but they have become a little too crazy, expensive, and touristy for my taste. Luckily, I discovered the laid back atmosphere of Puerto Morelos. Puerto Morelos has become our go-to place in Mexico when we want to relax and enjoy life on the cheap, but still have access to white sand beaches on the Caribbean side. I love the Mexican village area just two kilometers west of the beach with all of the family-owned local restaurants and stores. Plus, it's just a short bicycle ride to the beach when the mood strikes. Okay, coming in at number three, Nha Trang, Vietnam. Nha Trang is still my favorite place in Vietnam for living and for retirement. Nha Trang is a larger, beautiful city right on the beach with some cultural opportunities like temples, traditional handicraft markets, and traditional Vietnamese folk music, clothing, and dancers. There are also three museums, a Zen monastery, art galleries, mud spas, waterfalls, sailing, and wave runners. There is a large community here interested in taking care of their bodies, yoga, beach exercise, beach running, fishing, swimming, biking, and hiking. There's also a bunch of choices in spiritual pursuits. A town we love in Vietnam almost as much as Nha Trang is called Da Nang. Da Nang would be a great choice if you want access to a large population of expats around you, American expats. Vietnam has been changing their visa rules recently in non-favorable ways. So we're hoping they will have more friendly visa options when they reopen in 2022, we're, we're standing by and watching. Okay, coming in at number two is Krabi, Thailand. This area of Thailand would be a great place for people that are most comfortable in a smaller city at the beach, Onam, or just 25 minutes away from the beach in a, town, a small town called Krabi Town. This would not be ideal for a city person. There's a nice, a night market in Krabi Town and a river waterfront park for socializing and walking in the evenings. You can also get to one of the most beautiful cliff formations along a beach in the world called Raleigh Beach by boat from either Krabi Town or Onam. In years gone by, I would have recommended Chiang Mai at this price point, but the burn season, that's where they burn the crops, um, has made, the, made Chiang Mai unbearable over the last few years. But since you will be trying to live on a thousand per month, you'll need about 800K baht or about 26,000 US to put in a Thai bank in order to qualify for the, the Thai retirement visa without showing 
a monthly income. Um, okay, coming in at number one for the top five places in the world where I would 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 uh, favorites to retire in a thousand per month. Number one is Dumaguete. Um, Dumaguete has a small town feel to it. Uh, the people are friendly in Dumaguete, Philippines, and live a relaxed, easygoing life here. I ran into a group of retired Americans at the McDonald's fast food across the street from the park, and they said that Dumaguete is not as good as it once was. They said it is getting too crowded and too much traffic compared to five years ago. I asked them if they had been to other towns in the Philippines, and one jokingly said, all of them. I asked what town they would retire to today if they moved to the Philippines today. All six agreed they would retire in Dumaguete. It was still their favorite place. None of them wanted to move back to America. It is a cheap place to live here. There is scuba, fishing, snorkeling, turtle watching, whale shark watching, and beautiful locals. We, we loved it so much, we decided to stay in Dumaguete instead of fly home during the coronavirus. Remember, these are just the top five at a thousand per month. There are many other places I would also be willing to live on a thousand per month, month, but I cut this list down to five since I have two more price points to discuss below. Next, I'll give you my top five in the world. I would retire if my price point or income was 1500 per month. But first, the fact that I could live in one of these places for a thousand per month or 1500 a month or even 2000 a month does not mean you could or would be able to or would want to. Before moving overseas, I suggest that you do what I call an exploratory visit. Only by putting your feet on the ground and determining where you would be willing to live, shop, and dine will you be able to confirm your personal living costs in any of these places. To help you better understand why some people spend more money than others as expats, review my report why many expats struggle at living on a thousand per month. Okay, now for my favorite places to retire on 1500 per month. My favorite places to retire on 1500 per month. Of course, it goes without saying that if I was willing to live somewhere on a thousand per month, it would be just as easy or easier to live there on 1500 per month. So the following new ones are just five more places I would be willing to live on 1500 a month because all five of the previous one I mentioned, I would also be willing to live on 1500 a month. Okay, coming in at number five at 1500 a month, Querétaro, Mexico. This remains one of my favorite cities in Mexico. The colonial era center of Querétaro is one of the nicest I've seen anywhere in the world. It is clean, beautiful, and well-maintained. You can tell that the per capita income is high in Carretero just by walking around. As the second highest state in wine production in Mexico, wine tasting is available. There are many interesting day trips you can take to places within a few hours, like Guanajuato, San Miguel de Allende, and Mexico City. There are huge shopping malls stocked with international products at reasonable prices. There is an international airport 45 minutes outside of Old Town with reasonably priced flights throughout Mexico and the world. The classical music, theater, dance, and live performance opportunities are second only to Mexico City, which is only a few hours away. Okay, coming in at number four, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, I would be willing to live there on 1500 per month. I haven't been to Buenos Aires in over 10 years, but I loved it at the time. I usually don't recommend places that I have have, haven't visited in so long, that is because it's hard to judge the cost of living without your feet on the ground. But the Argentine peso has been hammered fairly hard over the last three to five years against most major currencies. That means that your purchasing power has increased substantially in Argentina, so you'll be able to enjoy this city of European flair with much less money these days. Okay, coming in at number three, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia is a beautiful, clean, modern city. It has gorgeous malls, great public transportation, foods from around the world, and a large, diverse population of Malay, Chinese, and Indian citizens mingling with expats from around the world. It also is a great transportation hub for flights all around the world. Plus, you're just a short flight 
from all of the amazing countries of Asia. It has a growing medical tourism business with great hospitals, with prices often cheaper than Thailand. It also has a very low crime rate and a very reasonable cost of living. The only thing that seems to cost much more than other parts of Southeast Asia is the alcohol. Okay, coming in at number two, Bangkok, Thailand. Almost every nationality of food is in Bangkok. The famous brands worldwide are in Bangkok malls. Many wealthy people from around the world come here to have fun, to shop, and for medical and dental. You can spend money here like a drunken sailor without much effort at all, but there's almost always a cheaper version of anything you could want, sometimes with even better quality. Bangkok has an active symphony, a somewhat active live theater community, and even some opera, international pop, jazz, hip hop, and techno music entertainers circulate through Bangkok. There are dance clubs galore that come in fashion at a moment's notice, so you'll need to Google that when you're ready to go. You can even visit a ladyboy cabaret style show if the mood strikes. Whatever your thing is, just Google it with the word Bangkok and you might be surprised. Expats have been living here for decades, so you have both Thai and foreign cultures. Okay, coming in at number one, my favorite place in the world on 1500 a month is Ubud. It is a beautiful traditional village in Bali, Indonesia, where many people love to stay and eat in many of the healthy international food restaurants. There's also many other communities around it that are cheaper to stay. This is one of the most famous tourist de destinations in the world. It was, of course, beautiful. The landscape, the beaches, the people, the joys of this relatively small island are spread out everywhere. So you'll need to have a vehicle or rent a scooter like most people. Make sure to ride your scooter to Utwala on the southern tip of Bali to see the fishermen boats, the local fish market. Also take the ferry over to Lembongang for the weekend and visit famous cliff beaches and umbrella graveyards. Finally, bring your camera with you when you visit the terrace rice fields when they are in full green before harvest. Before I tell you my favorite places to retire cheap on 2000 per month, I want to recommend that you have some emergency funds available to pay for any emergencies that may happen while you are living overseas. The fact that you have enough to live on your monthly recurring expenses would not help you in case of emergency. So, in fact, I have two other reports, the two biggest risks of retiring cheap overseas and overseas retirement mis mistakes you'll regret forever that you should read to help anticipate and smooth out any problems and emergencies you may have retiring overseas. Okay, now I'll discuss my favorite places to retire cheap on 2000 per month. My favorite places to retire cheap on 2000 per month. I would begin migrating towards the cheaper countries around the Mediterranean Sea. All of the falling places would be great places. But remember, the places I would recommend for 2000 per month also include the places that I mentioned for 1000 and 1500 because more money just makes it easier almost anywhere. You're probably thinking, why is Dan waiting until 2000 per month before suggesting great places around the Mediterranean? Mostly that is because unlike Southeast Asia and Latin America and Eastern Europe for that matter, the delicious food uh, just seems to be more expensive around the Mediterranean. The truth is, it's just easier to get an excellent $5 meal in Southeast Asia and Latin America than around the Mediterranean. That applies to both foods you buy in restaurants as well as the ingredients you buy in the stores to cook at home. Okay, coming in at number five for my favorite places at the 2000 per month price point. I could see myself living here in Lisbon, Portugal. In some ways, it reminds me of San Francisco, which is near where I grew up. But we were surprised how expensive restaurant food was in Lisbon because we went there after touring Mexico for about six months. It can easily run you 12 euros for just your entree at a neighborhood restaurant in Lisbon. It goes up from there for fine dining and specialty foods. It was raining the first few days we were in Lisbon, so we ended up cooking many of our own meals at home. That ended up saving us a bunch of money. Lisbon is a place you can just walk around for hours and just is gorgeous and charming and the time just passes. 
Next up, coming in at fourth, Porto is a, Porto, Portugal is a really fun city. There are beaches, wine tours, symphony, many food choices, hiking, biking, great day trips, weekend getaways, sports stadiums, sailing, water sports, parks, and nature. It has a beautiful landscape and a romantic yet safe feeling to it. It's like living in a storybook. Plus, like San Francisco where I grew up, if it feels too cool some days, you can head east to warmer weather. Lisbon is only slightly behind Porto in my mind in terms of livability. I could live in either. Okay, coming in at number three, Petras, Greece. The Petras, Greece region is home to various ancient Greek, Roman, and Byzantine monuments, including uh, the Roman Odeon, the Fortress of Rio, and the Fortress of Petras. Petras is a nice-sized city with about 300,000. It is on the water and has beaches and a big university. Life is cheap and of fairly high quality. It's also relatively warm much of the year. It is well situated geographically to visit other parts of Greece because there are ferries running everywhere. Um, coming in at number two, uh, Malaga, Spain, is one of the oldest cities on the Mediterranean and has all of the culture, food, uh, beaches, and nightlife that that implies. And then for number one, um, in, in, for Sicily, Italy, and maybe uh, there's a couple cities there, but Sicily is an Italian island in the Mediterranean Sea. The food is amazing and the culture of Italy is one of the most interesting in the world. And so you should go there and investigate and pick your favorite city. Finally, I need to mention that I just have not spent as much time around the Mediterranean as I have around Southeast Asia, Latin America, or Eastern Europe. Most of the time I've spent there has been a week here and a week there. This is because I visited the Mediterranean countries mostly when I only had a week or two off from work at the time, back before I quit the rat race. So it just may turn out that I'm actually able to live there for cheaper than I remember. Only time will tell. Okay, thank you for reviewing Where to Retire Cheap Overseas on Social Security in 2022. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video for Google map links, reports, and other information. There you will also see our Retire Cheap in Paradise catalog, how we pay for our travels, and my free ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 14 plus years.